Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to The Blue Nose, something that I do know a little bit about just from learning about it in Heritage Minutes, but I'm interested to see what made these boats so legendary. Today, we're going to be talking about an iconic part of our history, something that we all know Pricing. about because we often have a picture of it in our pockets. I'm talking about the very thing that's on this dime, the Blue Nose. Christ. The Blue Nose, or the Queen of the North, is a piece of our history and it has become iconic thanks to its legendary ability on the water. Built in 1921, it would become one of the greatest racing ships in the world and an important symbol of Canada for the next 20 years. Well, trying to think back to what I know about it, I'm fairly sure it was, what, like 15 or 20 years this boat just was on the water, just being unbeaten, one of the fastest ships in the world, or at least just within this class of ship and size, for goodness sake, because it's not a small vessel. As you can see, you have multiple sails there, multiple masts, as well as so many other individual sails that are just unfurled there. And I can understand why you would then put it on a coin, because all these just historical ships are so detailed and so ornate, especially when you see all the layers of the sails and the furling and the rigging and all of that that goes into just driving one of these ships along the water at speed is honestly incredible. And so now I'm just wondering what coin is it actually on? Here we go, it must be the 10 cent coin because it says the famous Nova Scotia schooner that has graced our 10 cents coins in 1937. Taking its name from the term used to describe Nova Scotians in the 18th century, it was really? designed to both fish and race. The purpose was to compete with American schooners and the ship was made with Nova Scotia pine, spruce, birch and oak. Of course it was, it makes so much sense to be using the materials that you have readily available instead of just importing them from other ships and other places. And maybe it even had some impact as to how it even crafted its way through the water at such speed. Like you said, it was just beating all these other American schooners and everything else in between. And for goodness sake, this was also a boat that was built for fishing, not just racing. And so the fact that you have a dual purpose and you're still the best in the world, or kind of in both because you can then chase the fish is pretty darn impressive. And so to learn that the entire thing was named, I guess it almost sounds derogatory. I mean, he does only say that it was used to describe Nova Scotians at the time, but I feel as though if anyone's making up a name like that, it generally isn't in good faith. The purpose was to compete with American schooners, yeah. and the ship was made with Nova Scotia pine, spruce, birch, and oak. But the masts were created with Oregon pine. Victor Cavendish, Governor General of Canada, would drive the golden spike that would mark the completion of the ship's construction. Officially launched on March 26, 1921, it was christened by Audrey Smith, who was the daughter of shipbuilder Richard Smith. Performing her first sea trials out of Lunenburg in April, the ship began fishing for the first time on April 15th. Ah, oh, the entire thing just sounds so immaculate, doesn't it? Just to be sailing this beautifully crafted boat just out in the open ocean, just catching fish left, right and centre because it is the 1920s, well before overfishing to the extent that we have today, let alone to be the person that just got to send this on its maiden voyage. I mean, I guess to be fair, you wouldn't actually know the impact that this boat is going to have because you just sent it out, it hasn't even touched the water yet. But then to years later, be looking back at the boat just on the 10 cent piece and go, that was once mine. I christened that, I sent it off on its maiden voyage. Incredible story. When the fishing season ended, the Blue Nose began racing, and what a racer it was. Yeah. She would take part in the 1921 International Fisherman's Trophy race off of Halifax in early October. She defeated the American challenger, the Henry S. Ford, and captured the trophy. Yeah. In 1923, Blue Nose would take on Columbia, a ship that had been designed to defeat Blue Nose. <laughs> Held in Halifax, new rules were put in place that prevented ships from passing marker buoys to landward. While Blue Nose won the first race, the ship broke the new rule in the second race and lost. After a great deal of debate and protest, it was decided that the vessels would tie and share the prize. That certainly would have sparked a whole bundle of just controversy because I can only imagine people put in a whole bundle of money and a whole bundle of R&D and time, if nothing else, just to make this boat to beat it and then you ended up tying for goodness sake. I mean, I do want to listen to it again because I was confused at first going which boat actually broke the rules. I think it was the Blue Nose. While Blue Nose won the first race, the ship broke the new rule in the second race and lost. Right. See, that's what I'm not sure he said the ship, and does he mean the ship that was designed to beat it, or Blue Nose itself? I can only imagine he means that Blue Nose broke the rules because it won the first race, but then DNF'd in the second race because it went too close to shore, is what I can only gather from that. And so I guess that is their fault, even though they probably didn't want to do it, they were probably forced into it via wind, and they just went, ah, stuff it, it's a new rule, we'll just try and work our way out of it, because we won the last one, but they went, no, 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 you can't 
can't be getting out of it that easy. You just have to go back there and share the crown with the other guy. Which to be fair, even though you would have had a few mixed feelings, I'm sure the crew would have been feeling just fine considering they clearly won the first one and probably would have won the second one if it wasn't for a rookie error. And so to go back there and share the crown with the other guys, you'd be feeling very, very smug because he goes, well, we won one and a half and you just won half. After a great deal of debate and protest, it was decided that the vessels would tie and share the prize. The race would actually be gone for the next eight years due to anger over these events. <laughs> eight for the next several years, several Canadian and American businessmen would design and build their own ships to beat Blue Nose, wow. but Blue Nose would continue to defeat them, often winning very easily against its opponent, losing only once in 1930. That is just insane that once again these people just are building boats to try and even beat Blue Nose and they still are unable to do it bar one. It really just shows you the class of boat that Blue Nose was in because it was a fisher for goodness sake. I still can't even get over that fact that it was just built as a fishing vessel and then in its off season would just become a racer. Like that is insane that you have an American and Canadian businessman just still being subpar because building a ship would be no small monetary feat and so to be pouring all of this money into it and then to still come up short to something that was never designed to it, you'd really be quite angry and so I can understand understand why there was eight years of controversy after one little slip up going too close to shore. Everyone was just trying to get rid of that thing, just hoping in those eight years that it would just die out, it would rot away or something, but no, 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 it came back with a vengeance and still managed to beat the boats. But Blue Nose would continue to defeat them, often winning very easily against its opponent, so losing only once in 1930. By the 1930s, Blue Nose had stopped fishing as its style had become obsolete due to motor schooners and trawlers. At this point, the ship would spend much of its time being an ambassador for Canada. In 1933, it was invited to the World's Fair in Chicago. Two years later, it sailed to Plymouth to be part of the Silver Jubilee of King George V. Wow. In 1936, it returned to fishing thanks to the installation of diesel engines. Oh, really? I was wondering if it ever underwent a whole bundle of modifications because that's the shame about it being a fishing boat that it still had to kind of be able to perform. But then when he was talking about it not longer being able to fish because of a change in styles, I was going, okay, so maybe it became a fully fledged race boat. So then it would actually be kept in immaculate condition, but clearly not. It actually just went, hang on a second, we can just slap some diesel engines on here and just get it back to work, the poor thing. And so I certainly hope that its entire structure wasn't then compromised and it was just weighed down and bogged down by these engines that are meant to be propelling it, but I'm sure it would just add to the weight and just add to its slowness. As for goodness sake, it went all around the world just celebrating so many different events, just being an ambassador like they said, and so I'm, I'm wondering now, was the crew the same the entire time within reason? Because if they were the same sailing crew that were able to win the race after race after race after race, you would certainly be getting all over the world very, very quickly, wouldn't you? Or actually, I guess on the complete other end of the spectrum, if it was never the same crew, then that really is a testament to how good this boat was, because it didn't matter who was behind the wheel and behind the helm, it just sailed really fast. In 1937, Blue Nose was challenged to a race by the American schooner Gertrude El Thabad, which was the one that beat it in 1930. The race would consist of a best of five series of races for the International Fisherman's Trophy. The race would start on October 9th, 1938, with the ships splitting the first two races. Blue Nose then won the third race by a larger margin than the second race. She would lose the fourth race. And with the fifth and deciding race, Blue Nose would win. And the race would be the last of the fishing schooners of the North Atlantic. I mean, it's no surprise to anyone, but once again, they just could not beat the boat, could they? The fact that they were even just given a bit of a head start going, okay, I guess we'll let you win the first one and the third one just to make things interesting because we can't just have a completely clean sweep. No one's going to be tuning in if we just win the first one and two and three by massive margins. But I do love the fact that it was just all centered around the same boat that it lost to originally. And it was just after a bit of retribution, obviously. And like I was then saying, if it was the same crew, especially if it was the same crew on both boats, then you would really just have a head to head race, wouldn't you. With the outbreak of the Second World War, the vessel was sold to the oh, West no. Indies Trading Company in what? 1942 and was Why? stripped of its masts and rigging. Why? Made a coastal freighter in the Caribbean Sea, she would meet her end on January 28, 1946, oh. when she struck a reef and broke apart. Oh. Who was the captain of that time? Because we need to have some serious words. After all of that, after everything I went through, it just got sold off like it was nothing, stripped of everything that made it important, and then just crashed into a reef. Like, there really isn't a very kind of happy ending for it, is there? I mean, look, I get it. It was World War II, money was tight, but for goodness sake, you've got it on the back of your coin. Surely you have to give a little bit of respect to something that is on the back of your coin and not just sell it off just for a bit of money just to pay for the war. So easily this vessel could have been used as even a morale booster for the Navy, you know? 
know, they're all out on their ships and they go, wow, actually, do you know what ship that is? That is on the back of the coins. That's incredible. The blue notes, look at that. But no, it was too busy just being broken and half devastating the environment by crashing into a reef and devastating millions of Canadians and everyone else worldwide that just loved the boat. I mean, I can only imagine there was a few very smug and wealthy businessmen that were going, ah, yes, finally, good riddance that thing. It just isn't beating my boat because I still haven't been able to build one that beats it. While the vessel is gone, she still lives on in the 1963 replica called Blue Nose 2 that was built to similar specifications of the original Blue Nose and is used to teach children and students about the sea and to serve as an ambassador for Nova Scotia. You could have had that with the first one. I mean, clearly there wasn't any forethought about the entire thing going, hang on a second, that was actually a pretty cool boat that we just ditched off to the middle of the West Indies to become a work vessel. So much so that they went and rebuilt one in a commemorative fashion. And I mean, yeah, sure, it's good to be using it as an educational resource, but my goodness, I just do not understand the entire thought process there. You know, they said it was built roughly on the original specifications, but it was hardly built identically. And it's not some Archimedes ship principle where you just start taking planks and building the same ship again. No, 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 no. You'd just crash the original into a reef after you didn't care about it and that's where it will forever remain. The Blue Nose has been featured on several stamps including 50 the 50 cent issue from 1929, the 60 cent stamp from 1982 and the 37 cent stamp from 1988. What? Blue Nose. 37 cents in 1988. It sounds so ridiculous to hear because it was already on the 50 cent stamp and then it got downgraded as the time went on. So inflation went up and the Blue Nose just got relegated once again in its life. Blue Nose also appears on the Nova Scotia license plate and in 1937 okay. it was put nice. on the Canadian dime. Angus Walters, captain of the Blue Nose, was included in the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame in 1955 along with Blue Nose. Wow. Blue Nose was the first non-human inductee to the museum. I mean, I have to give credit where credit is due. That is pretty cool to be the first non-human. And I wonder how many other ones there have been since then, but to be the first non-human entry into the Hall of Fame or the Sporting Hall of Fame, that is a pretty cool achievement to be getting, especially because they were paired up as captain and ship. You know, like I was saying, is the crew the same? And I can only imagine that that guy was with the Blue Nose for a very, very long time. And so I just want to look up Angus Walters. Wow, that is a hell of a cup. I hadn't realized it was so huge. Look at the size of that thing. That is unreal and awesome at the same time. I didn't expect it to be that big. I mean, I guess it was an international competition, so fair enough. I wonder when did he pass away? Oh, 1968, so I guess he did get to see the replica, and I wonder if he got to captain it or christen it, because that would certainly be quite a nice thing for him to do as well. And I especially wonder what he thinks about the second one, because I can only imagine that just captaining both, you know, you're going, oh, this just feels sluggish and slow, because nothing beats the original Blue Nose. But hey, this was a great little video just to do a bit more of a deep dive onto the Blue Nose, because I learned through the Canadian Heritage Minute just how incredible it was as a racing vessel, but I had no idea how long and successful its entire career had been, you know, from racing to fishing to racing again to fishing again to then becoming just some mule just off in the middle of nowhere to then crashing into a reef. It's an incredible story arc, and so I can really appreciate why it is such a world class vessel that has been put on a coin because the craftsmanship in the first place is incredible, but then the crewing of it, the maintenance of it, and just everything else that goes into just maintaining a boat to last for 20, 30, 40, 50 years is just incredible. But anyway, and saying that I reckon I'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this video if you did enjoy it feel free to do the YouTube algorithm things down below also if this is the first video of mine that you're watching then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done or hey maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have a good one and see ya